All right, the beauty of digitally inking is that it's already separated in layers. And in Illustrator, it's already perfectly smooth. And I have the ability to edit it anytime I want. And I can use the pencil tool, my favorite tool, at any time to redraw and play with edges, right? Which is not the same in Photoshop, just using the brush tool. And by using the blob brush as my main tool to connect everything, it helps me uh, find all these connections in ways that don't leave any gaps and keeps them all on the same path. So just by doing that, you can see that now this is all one path, but it must be disconnected somewhere because it didn't connect there. So by using the blob brush, I connect all those little gaps and now it is one complete path. And then I can use the blob brush here to complete it there. And if I need to, I can even use Pathfinder to merge them together. So that's what we're hoping for. Everything's one kind of clear path we can use. With the consistency that the computer can help us get. Now, some people, this depends on the, the tablets you have, and we have fairly basic tablets. We can't control the tilt or the twirl with these basic tablets. In digital honors, they, they get to use the Intuos tablets where you can control those things. And you might feel like your brush settings in Photoshop, which we'll learn more about when we do digital painting, are just more sensitive than the blob brush. But remember that the computer is cutting out these shapes as vectors on both sides. And all the, the brush tools in Photoshop can do is just fill up pixels. And so if at the end of the day you want a vector as your line work, it makes sense to try to use Illustrator tools as much as possible to get there. But I get that that's tricky and takes practice. Now, a big thing in commercial art is usability. The reason people will hire professionals to do their projects rather than just friends that like art, is that it's not just what the end product looks like, it's how it's formatted and how versatile it is for the different uses they might need. So whether you're doing a logo design or whether you're doing a spot illustration, it's always good to build it in such a way that it has that versatility. And so we're gonna use this as an illustration for products that we choose and put up to Redbubble, but we're also going to use it for assignment eight to put with text to make a poster of our own design. And then you can think of that poster as a book cover, or you can think of that poster as um, a full concept illustration for a magazine. I'm thinking of it as kind of almost a, an independent rock uh, concert poster. And the vectors are going to help us scale it to whatever we need. That poster might need to be really big. You might put it on the side of a, a band's tour bus, right? And if it's a vector-based image, you don't have those, those options. If it's just a set number of pixels, then you're limited to what those pixels can do.
Now with this uh, subject, the kind of approach I'm using visually is looser, more expressive. And so I'm not sweating all the little details, little marks. But the other big advantage of digitally inking an illustrator is I can set this tool, this blob brush tool, to be smoother or more exacting. I have it set to be pretty accurate right now, so it catches every little nuance of my wrist. And then if I was doing something that I wanted to be really clean, I could always use the, the pen tool to get like perfect straight lines, perfect curves. Keep forgetting I'm an illustrator. And I keep holding down Option with Command Z to go multiple steps. But you only need to hit Command Z in Illustrator to do multiple steps. And you can do it over and over again. Okay, so I'm almost done with the bunny. But you can see that some of the lines I did from a distance just don't fit with the quality of finish of the other lines. And so you want to kind of find your, your level of distance that makes sense, your level of speed that makes sense. And the brush sizes that make sense and and the level of um, smoothness or accuracy that makes sense. All of that's very particular to what you're enjoying doing, how you can stay engaged. Slightly detached engagement is what we want. It's also important to remember that unlike our logo, this does not need to work only as black and white. The line work just contains the coloring that we'll be adding next class. All right, so now I can move on to the Nighthawk. I'll just check how it looks you know, without the sketch behind it, it reads pretty clean. It's got a nice variation in lines. There's some I can tweak and, and smooth still, but on the whole, yeah, it's, it's capturing the essence of what I want. And it looks like it's fully contained. Okay, so now I want the same things from the Nighthawk, except this I'm going to be a lot more aggressive with in the inking. And I might as well do it on a new layer, right? Remember, layers in Illustrator are just for our own organization. So with the Nighthawk, I'm going to start with the details again. Oh, not the pencil tool. How did I get there? I'm going to get the detail of the eye. I'm going to trace around these highlights, some of these echo highlights. Show you another reason why starting with the eye is very satisfying is that I can shape it up at the end. So once I have all of that, it's the only thing on this layer, so I can just do the large selection tool. I've locked the other layers, and I can squeeze it and rotate it and kind of get it right in the spot that I think is most evocative for my creature before moving on. Now the Nighthawk is a hawk, even though it's a really small one with not the most impressive beak. I'm going to try to give it a little air of danger here with these curves and these shapes and the thickness of them. And then I'm going to get super aggressive on the inside. And this might be where I do need to look at my reference a little bit. With this old naturalist 
rendition. Right. And it shows me there's a ridge on the beak I might want to play with. In fact, with the bird, there's so many little sensitivities. I think I'm going to set this to be fully accurate, not at all smooth. So that every little, just like in Photoshop, every little um, bump I make is captured. There we go. I'm just working with the blob brush. And I still want a solid outline around, but I want to start finding a pattern of movement to my hand. So whereas I did a lot of kind of triangles and jitters with the rabbit, here I'm going to do lots of little curves. So this is not so much an animator's line. This is more a texturing line. But always connecting. I might go a little bit smoother on the bottom. Just little by little. Just like you would with an ink pen. I know some of you are aspiring animators, and so you might not be used to the, the playing with the thickness and thinness of your lines. As an animation, it's just for the standardization of the product. They usually use a continuously technical line. So I could do that with the blob brush too if I wanted. I could just turn the pressure and set it to fixed, and then it would always be the same weight no matter what I did, right? Which is what happens in animation. But an illustration line weight is one of our best expressive tools. So it makes manga different than the anime versions of characters. So don't be locked into any one approach. Okay, so I like how that outline is starting to work. It contrasts nicely with the character of the rabbit, which is a little bit uh, longer and leaner. And then I want to start setting up what the inside looks like. And these are old printmaking and engraving techniques of really playing with the direction of your line. In fact, I think I'm going to make it even smaller. Yeah, I could do that, It'll take a while, maybe a little bit bigger, maybe four, five. Yeah, so by kind of, the only thing I can really control is the direction of the marks. This is pretty heavy inking, which means I won't need as much coloring behind it because all the tone will be just in the inking alone. That's another way to think about your line work. And I can think of it as kind of cross contour hatching, where I use it to define across the, the form of the beak and the form of the, the bird's body, but also kind of suggest all these feathers and these striped textures that the nighthawk has. Now this is for your portfolio, so you just want something that you like and that you can commit to. Sometimes that takes extra effort, sometimes it takes using lab hours, working outside of class. But as long as you don't spend a lot of time doing rework and fixing mistakes or